If you're reaching out to the brand, they don't need you. There's a billion reels being shared into stories each day. No way. Each day. So think about that much content. In order for people to discover you, you got you have to produce. You have to keep going. You can't going. just do one little thing and a that's drop why in the ocean. If you want to play the growth game, you've got to go where the algorithm's pushing. Some people look at one opportunity and forget the opportunity that they mm. do have. It's okay if it's on the iPhone. It's mm. okay if it's not super cinematic. If it just takes someone to a moment and makes them feel something. People that are getting work and people that are getting called into jobs are people that are visible. I think as creators, sometimes we we like to think we're creative, mm -hmm. but we're the first people to put people in boxes. Art is subjective. For me, art met a personal need of community, of people, of connection. Yeah. The key to getting work is getting connected. It's the same consistent principle. Mm. Just post content that people like, mm -hmm and do it consistently mm -hmm. and you will grow. It's not that I'm amazing. Mm -hmm. It's literally not that. It's not that. Don't be discouraged. Don't be like, oh man, I'm just can't, I'm not gonna be as good as Jonathan or, mm -hmm. or Short Stash. I think that's the key, leaning into your thing that you can do mm -hmm. well. For you, if it's super simple, lean into it. Start with what you have. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest key is start with what you have. You gotta work your way there and you yeah. might even work yourself into a whole new way, mm -hmm. a whole new feel, a whole yeah. new look that you found where you found your thing. You're like, this is what I am and this is what I do and this is identifiably me. What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Today we are going behind the edit with Scott Backen. Now Scott's an incredible international photographer. He's worked around the world with some of the biggest brands out there when it comes to travel and lifestyle photography. He's a social media influencer and so I got to sit down with him at Socality House in Calgary, Canada and say, Scott, Tell me your story. How do you do what you do? What's your kind of approach to composition, editing? And of course, lift back the curtain when it comes to that entire world of social media influencing, building a following, working with brands, getting your first brand deals, and what he would do if he were starting out today and trying to grow an audience from scratch. So we talk about all that stuff, how to price your services, how should you actually negotiate those first brand deals? How do you attract brands to become an ambassador for? What's what's your approach, Scott? That was pretty much the, the question I asked over and over in this interview. So you're going to want to make sure you watch and rewatch this one because for me, at least, it was just so much value. So I would challenge you as you're going through this video, leave it in the comments below. As you're learning things, just write it down. Leave it in a comment so that you can remember and come back to it later. It's, it's so good, you're going to want to take notes, okay? So let's hit that intro and get into it. Peace. So Scott, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Ryan. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. No, I'm really excited to actually dive in because it's funny. We've hung out a few times, but I've never actually seen how you edit. Right. So I have no idea. We're going to pull back the curtain. Be prepared to be wowed. Yeah. <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> well, I, one thing, uh, you know, I, I hope it's encouraging for people is my edits are very simplistic. Mm -hmm. uh, I capture a photo that I really like, and then I just put some light coloring on it. What you see is mainly what you get. Obviously, you have to do some adjustments in Lightroom. Yeah. But I, you're not going to see any Photoshop, Wowzer, Sky replacements from me. Yeah. Um, you know, the odd thing here and there. But pretty much my edit's pretty simplistic, which I hope encourages people mm -hmm. that you don't have to. If you take a good photo mm -hmm. and you're pumped on the composition, um, you should be able to pull out the colors that you love um, and be happy with your edit. But for me, I think that's a huge win for people that want to, you know, yeah. get things yeah. out there fast. But at the same time, I've seen people when it's like, where'd those birds come from? <laughs> you know, wow, this yeah. sky looks amazing. How can you always get that sky? Mm -hmm. I just don't do that. That's just not my thing. So mm -hmm. yeah. And I nothing think, against it. It's no, no, no. no. I totally understand. And the beauty is the more time I spend with people who are way better than me, like you and well, I don't think I'm way better than you. <laughs> well, people who are definitely better. Yeah, you have some great um, edits. The fact is when you actually look at your work and you talk to people who are doing it professionally, like more often than not, Less of it's in the edit and more of it is in, in here, it's in the, the camera, it's right? The eye. It's the composition, it's, it's, in the light, it's the, in the eye, the, yeah. the foreground, the composition, the, you know, rules of thirds, mm -hmm. where you're placing the subject and what are you capturing, you know? 
And so, and making sure there's enough sky room, um, mountain peaks are always there. You know, you're getting enough. Mm -hmm. So I think composition is king and the edit really just brings out what already is there. Mm -hmm. So, and if it looks too oversaturated or fake, I know that does well on Instagram because it's so eye popping. Yeah. But to me, sometimes it's a bit of a turnoff because it just feels so fake. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you play with your colors, bring out the vibrance, mm -hmm. make it alive for yeah, sure. Fun do your sometimes thing, photos <laughs> look a little bit flat in real life. Yeah. So you got to bring out the colors um, for sure. But yeah. And that's what's so cool about this whole show with behind the edit. The concept is like, okay, it's great that you know how to edit. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Let's show show people your tricks. But at the same time, let's show them how do you actually create these moments? How do you totally. capture that kind of stuff? What goes into it? Because I think that's the missing ingredient for me that I didn't really understand when I was starting out. Yeah. It's like, okay, these photos are beautiful. I thought it was something to do with like the yeah. perfect preset right. or whatever, right? Well, I remember when we did our hike to, um, mm -hmm. it's escaping me. Lake ten, Louise? Ten, no, Tent Ridge. Tent Ridge. And we got up there because I said, let's go to sunset. Yeah. And we got up and you're like, whoa, this looks <laughs> amazing these colors uh -huh. and I'm like I always thought it was like a preset yeah. I'm like no it's just good light <laughs> and this is me recently like yeah this is recently ago. you because you, <laughs> I'm having a lot of revelations I said to Ryan I said watch we'll be the only ones up here because mm, traditionally you know people that hike mm -hmm. go you know mid-afternoon go in the broad daylight um because they're doing it because they love hiking they want to go get out go outside get some activity but photographers are going yeah. for a they're hiking because they like to hike but they also are going for the views and the colors and the light whether mm -hmm. it be sunrise or sunset and so it was so funny seeing your face because you're like wow look at this it looks amazing <laughs> yeah. i'm like yeah that's because it's all about lighting and timing yeah. and you know uh, the sacrifices you got to walk down in the dark mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. get the headlamp on and, and eat mosquitoes and eat mosquitoes and be prepared but um if you go and a good light and get a great, great composition you shouldn't have to do much editing mm -hmm. And that is the crazy part. Like what you don't understand is when you go there, it almost looks like that. It looks like that. And <laughs> Before that's why it. it's not like magic. I, I get so pumped when I just look at my photos in camera. I'm like, mm -hmm. these are going to be insane in the yeah. edit because they already look amazing in camera. And that's how you know. Yeah. But that is contingent on good light, mm -hmm. um, sunrise, sunset, and or a moody moody day like mm -hmm. you know i was some of the edit photos i'm going to edit today i i went um with my friend garrett we were just going down the parkway on our way to jasper and it was just a moody day and just everything fall colors everything looked perfect the blue lake it was still low cloud mm -hmm. you know uh, and it just like the oranges and the blues were just like every i was like man I could just you can't take a go bad to picture, every spot almost, right? and shoot all day long. <laughs> it's like too bad the sun setting because I could drive up and down the parkway mm -hmm. and have content for uh, three months yeah. because it just the conditions of the day looked amazing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So what is so great about this conversation is I got to pick your brain, not just on the editing, not yeah. just on the photo taking, but we're also going to talk about kind of your story. So yeah. tell me, how did you even get into doing what you do? Because you kind of have the dream job of yeah. like 99% of people watching this. Yeah, so I tell mean, me. I totally became a photographer by accident, to yeah. be honest with you. Um, and so it was more driven out of my own desperate need, looking for community. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we I lived in Canada, my wife and I, we moved to Australia, we came back um, after six years and um, just trying to reconnect back into this land. Mm -hmm. You know, we were away for six years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you go from Australian beaches and, you know, you know, you were there. Yeah, different world. And different world. And then you come back here and it's cold and it's snowy <laughs> and you're up to your knees in snow and, mm -hmm. you know, no one knows where Calgary is. And you're like, oh, I got to reconnect here. So um, there was this app called Instagram. It just kind of came on the scene. You might have heard of it. You might have heard of it, um, downloaded it and started posting on Instagram in the square. And I just was going out to the mountains and actually I wasn't going in good light. Mm -hmm. I was kind of just going out. Just doing your thing. Yeah, just doing my thing, posting a photo, taking on the iPhone 4, um, posting that. OG. And, and the OG. And people really just, it, 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 Albert is a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. So um, it does the main work for you. Um, and so I started posting that on Instagram. And um, I, I always think I did have a natural eye. Mm -hmm. Like I knew composition. I could. I knew what I uh, I like the look and the feel. And I felt like I could tell a good story mm -hmm. through an image. Um, I felt like that came to me naturally. But I was really just taking them on the iPhone, posting them, and I started to grow on social and um, started to connect with a whole bunch of people. And it was a wild west. Everyone was taking 
you know, yeah. photos on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, and then naturally, as people grew, people started to take photography a little bit more seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and people started to elevate, as they do on any app, it always starts out pretty raw. And then yeah. people bring the glam to it. They figure out, they figure whatever, out how yeah, to make it look amazing. Yeah, like hopefully that doesn't happen with Be Real. <laughs> <laughs> like we don't need that. Be fake. Be fake. Um, and so I... Um, I was just taking photos because every time I posted a photo, a couple things were happening. Um, people were commenting on, wow, where you live is really beautiful. And that was helping me fall in love with my backyard. Mm -hmm. And so photography for me was really helping open my eyes to the beauty around me. And then it made me crave because what I was looking for was community. So every time I went out and took more photos, every time I posted a photo, I was connecting with people. And so it became a real community thing for me. It became mm -hmm. about people and discovery and engagement. And so what drew me for photography, and everyone's got a different reason why they take photos. For me, it was about who it was connecting me to. Mm -hmm. And it was meeting a need inside of me. And so I fell in love with taking photos because every time I took a new photo, that inspired people. They mm -hmm. would comment, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if you take a good photo, people say, wow. Yeah. And that causes engagement, which you get discovery and then you follow them and find them and you comment on their work. And it was just engagement. Mm -hmm. So when posting meant talking to people, it was like a conversation. Yeah, it was a social thing. It was a social thing for me. And then as I grew, I started to get reached out to by brands. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I, I call myself, we all call ourselves Instagrammers, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm like, oh, I got asked to do a job. I'm like, I better go buy a real camera. <laughs> so I went and bought a Canon because I, in my mind, I just equated photos with Canon. Yeah. And so I just went to Best Buy and bought a, like, a camera, a Canon. Mm -hmm. like, and I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> you just went up to the guy, you're like, what do I need? Literally, like no clue, <laughs> nothing, no clue. I mean, this is, I wasn't a photographer. Yeah, of course you know, yeah. I'm just like excited to meet people. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm on this app that like, you know, you're connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, it was like really just a world of discovery. And it was so exciting. And then I got really excited about, I found like all of a sudden going out to the mountains and being in a place that I did want to be. And I was motivated because I'm like, I want to go out more. I want to see more beautiful places. Mm -hmm. I want to discover these epic views. And wow, I didn't even know my backyard looked like mm -hmm. this. Right. And then I was having this own revelation of self discovery of my own backyard. And then I was finding other people's um, homes on their feeds and be like, I want to go there and yeah. there and travel and see. And traditionally, before social media, you, you thought about, I'm going right? to go to Mexico, say it an all inclusive, yeah, yeah. and sit by the pool. Those are your two. options. Those are your <laughs> options. You just you're like, I'm on vacation, I'm sitting mm -hmm. by a pool lounger. All of a sudden, for me, it was like, I want to go and find places and mm -hmm. discover and and see what it looks like. Because every time I take a photo, I get to share that and I get to engage with more people. Um, and to me, that was the most exciting thing. And so, yeah, I went and bought a camera. And then um, I started getting paid for my work and someone said, Scott, you need to stop calling yourself an Instagrammer. You are officially a photographer. <laughs> and I was getting paid for it. Graduated. And I'm like, I yeah. guess I am. And I mean, I learned by doing and I was, I asked a lot of questions. I stood beside some really good people mm -hmm. and I just asked questions. I was like, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Like, mm -hmm. you know, and I learned all about settings and light and, and different times of day and composition. And when you really see a photo, at sunrise versus two in the afternoon and you see it with amazing light mm -hmm. and you see a still lake and you see that you're like, I need to go for that moment. Mm -hmm. And part of it is, you know, some of these places in Alberta, whether it be the winter or the summer, you find yourself at this still lake at 5 a.m. as the sun is rising and there's nobody there. Yeah, there's, there's nothing like it. It's like you're yeah. looking around in these vast mountains and these still lakes and it's just quiet. Mm -hmm. And you take this photo and you're like, how can it be so big? And I'm the only one here, mm. you know, obviously there are places that have filled up, but there's still a lot of places you can go and you can find yourself in this moment. You're like, it's actually pretty incredible. So it's photog crazy. photography means different things to different people mm -hmm. and it meets a need on some people at different levels. Um, and for how, whatever, I'm always a fan of however it meets your need, whatever it does for you in you and whatever your why is, just do it. Like, you know, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. If your thing is like, you know, like you just want to be like a traditional photographer, all the power to you. It, it, it should be, it's a creative, right? And it should be to you what it meets the need in you. Hmm. Okay. So there's so much I want to pick up yeah. about that. The first thing before we even get derailed is it's so amazing. I agree with you. You get up to this amazing spot. Yeah. I saw it in you when view. it happened yeah, yeah. to you. It, your your eyes went like, <laughs> I was like, uh oh. Yeah. And it we changes, got another it one. This is what happens. happens. But yeah, yeah. It, it is so crazy how true it is. You know that saying, like, the view's empty from the top? Right. It's like, 
I've gone on lots of those hikes now. Yeah. And it's always empty. Yeah. Because nobody wants to get out of bed at three in the morning nobody. and drive two hours and hike nope. four hours in the dark. Nope. And so it's, it's, it's not comfortable. Yeah. We think of it like this thing that's unaccessible in terms of like these people have this special privilege. It's just right. oftentimes I think they just want it more. They're willing to do that. They're just so like, are you willing to do that? That's, that's kind it. of the, the ingredient. So, and I think that's the thing is like, it, it's easy to go at, you know, it's not, it's hikes are hard, but you know, you go with a group of friends at 11, you do mm-hmm. your hike and that's the thing. And for those people, that's what they love. And so all the power to them, they're not going for the light. They yeah. are going for the views and the views are always spectacular. Uh, and they're going for the social element or the, the exercise. And that's great. But as photographers, we, and you can take a good photo and you can still show it off. And actually there are photographers who prefer that light. Mm. They like that light. That's what they post. And other people resonate with that and go, Oh, that's beautiful. Because, it still is beautiful yeah. but if you want like still lakes and you want like the pink sky or you know certain elements mm-hmm. um you know you, you sunrise or sunset for sure but there are people who love afternoon light and they crush it yeah yeah and so but when you see a view what it can be mm-hmm. and you get that glimpse it's yeah. like you're wrecked oh there's so many times <laughs> i'm like why am i doing this i'm getting up <laughs> at 2 a.m you're driving in the dark and it's cold and you know, mm-hmm. and you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're hungry and you're like, but when you see it and then you look at that photo, you're like, that was worth it. Mm. Yeah. And you have these moments. We're talking about them now, yeah. you know, and it's all also a photo is a moment, but it's a reminder of those experiences or those conversations off yeah. the trail. Things you never would have done otherwise. So. You would have never have it's done so it. Good. Yeah. So let me ask you a question yeah. because it's an amazing and encouraging story to hear how somebody who just went out and took photos, yeah. you know, you're doing what you're doing now, which is amazing. You're working yeah. with Canon, you're doing all these things mm-hmm. with Socality. But for people who are watching this and are like, well, okay, Instagram is not even a little bit since last year what it was, right. let alone what it was at the beginning when you had a lot more leverage. So totally. what would you say to people who are like, they don't have the portfolio or the followers or whatever, they're mm-hmm. just getting into it. Like, is there still opportunity there? Or how would you go about it if you're restarting like from scratch? I think there, yes and no, there are, uh, there's always an opportunity mm-hmm. to grow or become someone or something on a platform. Um, I was on Instagram in the first to market early days, early adopter. I was on Instagram when it first launched and we were, the community manager of Instagram was coming to our events. Wow. Like we were getting in, in phone calls, we were signing NDAs and learning about new product releases. Like mm-hmm. it was early days and it was days of discovery mm-hmm. and TikTok experienced that. I would say TikTok in about a year will be in the place where Instagram is going to be, where people have found their tribe, they've found who they want to follow, they've mm-hmm. found that group that they feel comfortable with. But when an app launches and there's momentum, mm. people are in discovery mode. Mm-hmm. Who's who in the zoo, mm-hmm. right? Who's the comedian? Who's the blogger? Who's the authority on how to, you know? Yeah. Who's gonna give me my five tips? And you, those people grow fast because it's first to market. Mm-hmm. So if people are looking at Instagram going, I wanna become big on Instagram, I would encourage them maybe you have to look at the next thing Mm -hmm. and go, how do you get first to market on there and define your voice? Because there is a next thing. Mm -hmm. There's more things you look at when Netflix launched and now you look at all these subscription models and there's always market share that's changing. And so it's good to be on Instagram. Right now, if you want to grow on Instagram, you have to do reels. Mm -hmm. You can use photography through reels. You can use photo uh, tutorials. You can show the before and after. You can show the raw image to the edit image and you can turn that into a video. You can do a quick cut. You can do, hold up your camera and show it and then show like a set of like 10 photos really fast. You can use photography in Reels. Reels doesn't have to be just all mobile content. You can still use your, your and there there's an article and I don't know it, but I'm only referring to it because I got told about it. Mm-hmm that the commercial photography, the photography commercial industry is like exploding Mm. right now. Really? There's still, people will always need images. Mm. And you can't think of, you have to think of Instagram as more of just like getting into a space, having a portfolio, using reels to grow and network. But really at the end of the day, you're providing a service and there's brands and everyone needs their billboards. They need their high res imagery for their websites. They need all of that. That's not going anywhere. Photos will always be valuable Mm -hmm. um, and money making opportunities. Will they be all about Instagram? Probably not. Mm -hmm. That ship has sailed, but you can use it in your, um, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're, you know, whatever you're doing, imagery is uh, is is definitely an asset but it's not like the early days when it was all just the photo because yeah. i mean that's all we could post mm-hmm. was photos 
You know, now, now the landscape is video, right? Now, like, now it is video. That's probably your main focus almost, isn't it? Yeah, well, like day it, to day? well it's what people are responding to the most. Yeah. I still post photos because I want to show off my photography. And But when on, brands pay you, are they mostly after video or photo? Right days? now they're asking for reels. Okay. Reels and TikToks. So there you go. And they might say, and a carousel, mm -hmm. you okay. know? But n right now, like gone are the day. I used to get paid for like, they'd come at me with like four posts, like four photo posts, mm -hmm. you know? Now it's all reels TikTok, wow. and it, and if it's a photo it's honestly a carousel mm. um, which is still great mm -hmm. and i have a blog and i take a lot of extra photos when i'm on a job of food and people and experiences and i put them on my blog mm -hmm. and i do a reel and i push people to my blog and then they can see more images mm -hmm. so I still think there's value in taking photos. There always will be. Mm -hmm. I just think you have to diversify and understand there are different tools that will help um, amplify your your photography. Sure. So yeah. let, let's let's break it down to super practical. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely, I mean, this is applicable mm -hmm. to me. I have almost no followers on Instagram, like a couple hundred, which yeah. might be pretty similar for most people's personal yeah. accounts. And I let's say I want to get into photography. I mm -hmm. don't have the audience and I don't do what you do. Yeah. So what would you say? How do you get started in this game if this is like a big dream of yours and this is what you want to do? What would you do if you were in my shoes? Well, are you making money? No. Well, you are through YouTube. Oh, okay. Let's, so, let's say, pretend I don't have the okay, YouTube. Okay, so you don't want to talk yeah, about that. I want to okay. make it super okay, relevant so to Okay, so for someone who this. doesn't, okay, because for you, I was going to say, <laughs> some people look at one opportunity and forget the opportunity that they mm. do have. And I'm a big fan of multi-platform, mm -hmm. multi-channel. Yeah, be, be active on YouTube, TikTok. They even say Pinterest now. YouTube Shorts is great. But if you were to take that all away, if you don't have another platform, yeah. so we'll remove you out of the equation. Yeah. If you want to get involved in, in these spaces, I say... Get on the app, mm -hmm. get on Instagram, get on TikTok, and post consistently. Hmm. Why, you, how much? To begin? Once a week, once a month? Once, once a, a day. Once a day? Once a day. Okay. Especially because the algorithm is finding out who you are. Mm -hmm. It's finding out who wants to follow you. It's learning, mm -hmm. right? It's learning. And the more you post, I was in a, a call with Instagram actually when they launched Reels and they said, now, it might have shifted uh, just because some of the things have changed, but they said, every week, here's a habit, and it is exhausting. But they said, in order to grow, you want to post three to four reels a week okay. in feed, one photo post, one video, and that's changed because now video, all video is yeah. reels. Go live once a week and um, do daily stories. Mm. Because they said, not doing... All of that is like driving a car with three wheels. Interesting. Because the algorithm is finding people in various For each platforms. Of those areas. There's people like okay. my wife, all she does is watch stories. Mm -hmm. So if you're posting stories all the time, if you're going live, if you're doing reels, if you're doing a photo post, the algorithm is um, distributing your content somewhere to different people mm -hmm. and how they're consuming. And so you can't just be active on one of the um, products. You have to be like using every product. And it sounds exhausting. But when you're first starting, mm -hmm. you have to go hard. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to like give it all you got. Constant mm -hmm. storying, uh, constant posting like a day, every day you post a reel, like three reels a week because the algorithm's going to find reels and push them out and put you in that suggested you know, category. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's learning you, it's learning your behaviors and it's learning people that want to follow you. That's so and interesting. And so I okay. have seen people actually who, start, that? who start Instagram in the last Recently. year okay. yeah, and, and grow. Wow. And 100% grow. You know, that really reminds me of that whole brute force strat. That's what it is, right? Yeah. It's just you're throwing so much more energy yeah. than anybody else is willing to put at well, it. Well, it's because usually when you are first starting, you have more disposable time. Mm -hmm. If you are in the game and you're literally now getting paid for your work, yeah. you're now in like work mode. Mm -hmm. You're doing projects. You've got deadlines. You've yep. got briefs. Schedule's you're delivering full. for content for clients. But when you're first starting... You're just doing it because you're having fun. Mm -hmm. You're just every day trying <laughs> things, posting. You're, yeah. You have time to drive to the mountains. And I know people that when they first start, they're constantly out there and they can spend hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. and like days and days and days. That's and all like, they do. That's all they do. And they yeah. hit every spot mm -hmm. and they just go on the rotation. And that's what you have to do when you want to grow. Mm -hmm. You have to get in the game. Same with TikTok. Consistency is king. It will push all of your content mm -hmm. somewhere. You can't just post once and then believe it. You can't set it and forget it. You okay, know? so that's a lot so, of content. What's, so when I talk yeah. about the ship has sailed, I mean more in the photo only world. Yeah. You got to do it all now, mm -hmm. you know? So then question for you, quantity, quality, obviously that's a lot of quantity yeah. to maintain the quality. Like for me, I yeah. go on a hike and because I'm starting out, mm -hmm. I... 
I get maybe like two or three photos that I'm like really proud of. Mm-hmm. So that's not a lot of content for an mm-hmm. entire hike. So how, mm-hmm. how do you gauge that? How do you produce enough content? Do you like rotate or what's your strategy? Do you repost? It depends. I repost. It depends okay. what you want to be known for. Okay. Um, I always try and post quality photos. Mm-hmm. The photos I post, I want to meet a certain standard. Okay. My reels are all about um, experiential. What does it make someone feel? Okay. And to me, it's not about, is it the most, it's a good scene. It's an emotive scene. It's got the right music behind it. It ticks the boxes, mm-hmm. but it's okay if it's on the iPhone. It's mm-hmm. okay if it's not super cinematic. If it just takes someone to a moment and makes them feel something. Reels um, is non-elevated content. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny because as you're saying that, I'm thinking about hikes we've done. Yeah. And, and I'm just picturing because I'm like doing this hike like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, get yeah. some great photos. Yeah, and yeah. you're like Mr. iPhone you know, just the entire it's time. It's out and you're just capturing content because that's your game, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you've mastered that. Well, always what the be. algorithm wants. Mm-hmm. And, but then my photo work, mm-hmm. when the scene is right and the yeah, light it's is intentional. good, put down it and grab that shot. Yeah. Um, and that shot's got to be a banger you know mm-hmm. it's got to be something that i'm just like best light best scene grabbed it mm-hmm. so for me uh, every photo that's going to be on my feed or, is shot on my canon okay um but video it's okay if it's, it's shot on my phone. iphone i have right? shot commercial work for brands mm-hmm. and when i say commercial work it's like going on social yeah but i'm being paid for a campaign mm-hmm. that i've shot on my phone mm-hmm. um because that's the way people are consuming mm-hmm content right now they're consuming it on their screen on their phone and they're used to it tiktok has uh, i'm seeing it more now on instagram mm-hmm. where people are grabbing their phone and talking to camera where they're um letting down their hair a bit and they're yeah. relaxing it's because, organic. It's because real. people are relaxed three years ago the pressure was so high on instagram it's like it's got to be so good now it's just like content's coming at you left right center someone told me that works at instagram there's a billion reels being shared into stories each day each day wow. that people are sharing reels into stories, uh, which just tells you the amount of content that's being pumped out, created. And so think about that much content. In order for people to discover you, you got to produce. You have to keep you can't going. just do one little thing and a that's drop why in the ocean. I yeah. literally, I get new content, but I repost old content because mm-hmm. there's a chance. When I post on Instagram, I'm speaking Instagram here and, and potentially TikTok. I'm not posting for my followers. I'm mm-hmm. posting to know that the algorithm is going to find new people that like this content. Okay. So I know my followers will like it, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I'm like, who else is out there? Got it. Because it will find people. And so people need to relax if their plan is growth. Mm-hmm. It depends what your plan is. Sure. If your plan is like, I just want to create the most epic, I want my my everything to be banger central, then that's your motive and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Then that's what you do. But if you want to play the growth game, you've got to go where the algorithm's pushing. And people naturally are responding to reels. But I think that um, you've just got to keep going and repost old stuff a year later. Find that old reel that did mm-hmm. okay or did well, repost it again. Okay. If people responded it to the first time, there's something in it that they'll respond to again. Mm. Um, good content will always, f- I've done it and tested it on TikTok and Reels mm-hmm. and stuff that went viral goes viral again. Yeah, again and again and again. Because there's a reason why. Yeah. It's ticking boxes, mm-hmm. it's ticking boxes. So I think that, and I don't I don't have a problem. When I see my friends repost, I'm like, I understand the game. Mm-hmm. Like do it, you know, but at the end of the day, they can go out and produce a whole set of images for a client that are all brand new Mm -hmm. and get work. If all this is doing is bringing new eyes to your platform, it's like out of sight, out of mind, right? Mm -hmm. People that are getting work and people that are getting called into jobs are people that are visible. Yeah. And so for me, when I'm posting, I'm just staying in the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, And someone said, oh, Scott, because I've been on the app now for 12 years and I'm a dad, you know, 45, and I'm still alive Mm. on this app Mm -hmm. is whereas I've seen so many people fall apart, stop posting, or they just can't get with the new trend Mm -hmm. and they fall behind or give up. Mm -hmm. And one thing about this social media strategy is you got to be on the front foot. Mm. You got to be willing to try the trend. When new things come out, you You got to try the trend, you got to activate and you have to somewhat not care Mm -hmm. what people are going to think about when you push posts. Like I said, I, posted the uh, reel of me brushing off my car on my driveway. Mm -hmm. You know, knowing full well that this is not hero content. This is not... Just day in the life. It's like super 
ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny. It's it's relaxing. It's just uh, it's it's entertaining. But people love it. Mm-hmm. But then I turn around and post a banger. It's like just <laughs> you relax it a mm-hmm. bit. You have some fun. Play mm-hmm. on social. Don't take yourself so serious. Um, I think the world's got so much going on. Sometimes it's nice just to scroll the feed and have a bit of a laugh. Or yeah. uh, you know, people go on these apps to escape. Mm-hmm. And so if something feels so perfect, it actually is almost it gets in the way well people feel like i don't want that mm. i don't want perfect i want to feel more connected and what makes me feel connected is when i see myself in the story yeah um and so but like i said there are so many ways and reasons why people do the things they do and that's okay yeah it should be how you want to do it you know i remember one time someone said instagram why do they have long captions it's a photo app it's like well yes and no it's a photo app to you and mm-hmm. that's okay mm-hmm. but my sister's not a photographer mm-hmm. but she's on the app my mom's not a photographer and she's on the app they're posting photos because that's what you do mm-hmm. you know but they're not photographers yeah you know they're posting like their food or their dinner or their vacation and so captions are important and some people post it because they want to keep up with family or yeah. it's something different to everybody and that's why i think it's cool it's like you do you mm-hmm. And I'll cheer you on and just have some fun doing it. And you know what's funny too is like with the captions, for example, like people dismiss a new feature or whatever and say it's not relevant. But then in the wedding game, at least, I don't know how relevant it is to you, but it probably is. At least for a time, people like read the captions. Like people, that's where you build a connection in a true way. My like, wife knows everything about everybody because yeah. she reads the captions. Exactly. I don't read the captions. <laughs> She's like, do you know this about this person? This yeah. person? Do-? I'm like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I scroll, I double tap, I watch. And that's I mean? marketing too, right? But like, my wa- She's going to buy from that people, brand because she certain relates. people read everything. Mm-hmm. They watch the stories. They listen to like yeah. someone can do their favorite influencer or a blogger can do. 20 talking stories for th- and go on for five minutes. Watch she'll watch all of them. Ev- she puts her phone down and just like listens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's brushing like, her teeth, whatever. Yeah. That, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but I'm just, but, he, but never, people engage with the app differently. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be mindful of that. Of those people. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's different for everybody. And so the way you produce, the way you consume, the kind of kind of like the content I try to produce mm-hmm. is content that I feel is informative. Like I really think about people that are traveling, um, especially moms, you mm-hmm. know, they're booking vacations, planning trips. Yeah. Um, and so I that's try, your avatar, that's right? why that's I'm doing my your... blog. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want to post a picture or a reel and give you information about how you too yeah. can book that experience exactly. or, or, you know, what's around it. Where can I eat? Where can I stay? And it's informational because if, if, if I become a resource to you, then you look at my um, content as a little bit more valuable, mm-hmm. whether that's a perfect photo or a funny reel or anything like that, it helps you um, put yourself in that story. Yeah. But that's my approach. But like I said, the app is different for everybody and should be produced and consumed just to how you see it fit for your life. There is no, I think as creators, sometimes we, we, we like to think we're creative, mm-hmm. but we're the first people to put people in boxes. Mm. You know, where we're just like, this is what creativity looks like. This is art. <laughs> but art is subjective, mm-hmm. you know? And for me, Art met a personal need of community, of people, of connection. Mm -hmm. And that to me is what helped me discover and what makes me want to go out and take photos or keep creating yeah. is the community piece. I love it. I yeah. love it. So it's okay. different for everybody. So let's let's kind of rapid fire a couple because sure. what I want to dive into really is your experience working with brands because that's sure. pretty unique and a, a gray area that nobody knows about. Yeah. Um, and then the actual like business of what you do if you're willing to, sure. to share on some of Whatever that. So um, let's talk first off, how do you get those first brand deals? We've talked about like if you want to grow on the platform, this is what you do. But let's say I just want to get some deals, get some paid work, right. get some whatever. Like, wh- where does one start? Like, grassroots, 30 seconds. 30 what will you seconds. tell me? Well, unfortunately, my story is not normal. I know. So, like, I had one of the biggest telecom companies reach out to me in the early days with the biggest job of my life. Mm-hmm. My first job was my biggest job. Wow. And so, I went from zero to hero. Yeah. That's so, it was the right place, right time. You also were doing the work. Yeah. It was, it was kind of everything. Yeah. Opportunity yeah. coalesces yeah. with hard work. Yeah. It was a perfect alignment. And that just led to more. And to be honest, over the years, I haven't had to chase work mm-hmm. because I got those good brands right One away. One to another. And right? I had a good growth. And the truth is, I'm a Canadian. I'm in a Canadian market. And mm-hmm. so, there's only, if I'm in there's America, so it's more saturated, right? Sure. Like, there's a lot more creators and a lot more. As mm-hmm. whereas Canada, it's there's less creators and there's you know less whatever, so mm-hmm. it tends to go to certain people. Um, like I can go on any trip in Canada and know 
a couple of the creators and who's yeah, going to be there. The same. Yeah. So, so that actually leads into a different, so, different segue, I yeah. guess, is when it comes to the actual like networking component so, and who knows you, like, yeah. is that where you start? Like, is it so building relationships? I would say if, if you don't get what I had, which is very unique Good and, timing and most likely and, not yeah. normal for people, I would say the key to getting work is getting connected, hmm. showing up, going to events, meeting people, shaking hands, um, going on photo shoots, like chatting with people, because the truth is someone's going to be doing a job, mm -hmm. says they need a second shooter or they need a plus one or, hey, you shoot good video. Do you want to come with me? Mm -hmm. Before I've seen it time and time and time again, people come to Calgary, they come with me or, you know, they get connected. And before you know it, they're full time. They're working, you know, and it's mm -hmm. not even about their social following. Yeah. Their work is what's opening the door for them. Mm -hmm. If you can make a good video and take good photos and you get connected, you are making money. Yeah. You get by giving, right? Like you get by giving. But number one thing is get connected, get out there, collaborate mm -hmm. with people, um, you know, and create good work mm -hmm. and show off what you can do. People will bring you along and hire you. And before you know it, you are irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of got to make yourself that person yep. and so getting connected is huge people like we're in socality house people come here every day and they are intentional about getting connected mm -hmm. uh and i think honestly that's a key and i know for me when i'm looking through things that i have to do i think who's in my rolodex that i can farm this out yeah. to or who can i bring along um and more often than not it's always out of relationship yeah and, and often someone who needs it. Mm -hmm. Like I look at some of my friends now and they're so busy, they don't need the work. Yep. So I'm going to give it you to give somebody a hand up, who, who needs a hand up, who I know. Who you like, who's who been like, helpful to you, who's whatever, helpful right? So. And is, you know, and is, is eager mm -hmm. and sincere and, mm -hmm. and can do the work. Yeah, and does good work. That's and does good work. And I know I'm going to have a laugh with and we're yeah. going to have fun. And at the same time, they're going to, uh, they want to do it. Mm -hmm. And so then you go, hey, who's around? And so making yourself available, getting connected and putting yourself out there is super important, but having the, the work to back it up. Yeah. Okay. So you've got, let's say you've done a little bit of portfolio work mm -hmm. because you're going out, you're hustling, you're doing it for fun on your spare time. You start doing like making some connections, you're getting the odd, whatever. Now you have a brand approach you. It's your right. first brand. You have no idea what you're doing. Right. Crash course me. Right. Crash course you. <laughs> so find out what the brand wants. Okay. So what do they actually want? You know, what do you mean by that? Brands will know what they want when they reach out to like you. Like deliverables or so outcome? First, first of all, okay. So I was telling someone this the other day, if you're reaching out to the brand, they mm -hmm. don't need you. They're okay. not thinking about you. Yeah, so when you pitch the money, they're like, you're not in our, you're not in our budget year. Sure. You're not in our campaign. Mm -hmm. But when they come to you, mm -hmm. you can get paid mm -hmm. because they're coming to you. So reaching out to brands, because I've talked to people like I've sent 300 emails. <laughs> It can work, mm -hmm. but more often than not, how you get a brand's attention is you follow the brand that you want to engage with. Mm -hmm. You create content that you know is like-minded. Relevant to them. Comment on their feed, mm -hmm. get engaged in their world, mm -hmm. you know, um, get, get, you know, so you're fine. So you want to work with, um, I don't know who, who, who. Uh, I don't follow uh, Raven. If you are Raven or yeah, you know, follow them. They're big, but uh, you sure. know, follow them and then go take a photo in one of their jackets okay. and tag them. Mm. Create content as if you are working for them. Yes. Become a brand ambassador without them asking mm. you and then leave comments. Yeah. Give Tell, first. Yeah. Give first mm -hmm. and get in there. And you know what they're going to say? Mm -hmm. We love your style. We love your work. Mm -hmm. Cause it's six months later after they see every day you're commenting yep. and they're like, we know, yeah. we know Ryan, we know Ryan. He He's loves hardcore. our yellow jacket. He's mm -hmm. always in it. It, you know, so every you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. All those things you've already done the work. They're gonna go. This guy's got our. That is gold. He's already got our brand. Yeah. Like we don't have to. He wants to work with us. It's mm -hmm. the ones when you go, hey, um, Canon. I'll switch to Canon if you give me a Canon. Mm -hmm. They could care less. Yeah. Because oh, you're only gonna work with us if we give you something. Mm -hmm. But it's like, hey, Canon. I've been shooting you since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I love Canon. I, this is my story. Like my dad gave me a camera. And, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm so like, you know, and they see that loyalty. They like, they love that. Mm -hmm. Brands, they, brands know when you just want a paycheck and they know when you've got yeah. their back because at the end of the day, they want, they want brand loyalty. Yeah. And so number one is, you know, already become a brand ambassador without it being asked. Mm -hmm. Create that content, give first, um, comment and engage with the brand. Um, and then when they come up, come to you and say, we want to work with you, we've got a brief, mm -hmm. they will give you a set of deliverables. Okay. 
And then you want to break that down line item by line item. Okay. You just don't go, that's twenty thousand dollars, please. <laughs> because twenty thousand for what? But they might so say So what are you pulling those numbers out of? Because so, for anyone who doesn't know, a yeah. line item is basically like one deliverable that's one right. amount of money. Right? That's right. And so it could like, okay, I've asked you to do a three day job mm -hmm. and I want three posts. I want ten photos that we're gonna license mm -hmm. and I want um and, and so that's it. Sure. And three so you posts, go, okay, I'm gonna break it down. Mm -hmm. So it's a three day shoot. Mm -hmm. Line item one is my day rate. Okay. Day rate times three. So How do you determine the day rate? I'm just making it up right uh, now. So these are not yeah. real numbers. Say it's 2,500 for the day. Okay. And if you're starting out, what would you say you so should 2, say? So 2,500 at eight for an eight is hour day. Is that reasonable? I think so. Really? Well, okay. divide by eight. Uh huh. What's eight hours eight divide hours. by 2,500? I mean, that's 300 bucks an hour. That's a pretty good day rate. Okay. So there you go. But okay. think of a wedding photographer. So, mm -hmm. but you know, you're working. Yeah, fair you're enough. You're producing fair commercial yeah, content. Okay. So now you've go, I'm just making, and I'm not I saying know, these are the numbers. I know, but I'm trying to be, So you know. 25, okay. So 25, <laughs> or so 2,000. Okay. 2,000 times three. three days. So now you're at $4,500. So that's so line, line item one. one. You know? 4,500. Okay. Line item two, three posts. Well, let's just say you charge 2,000 for a post. I'm okay. just making it. And where up. are you pulling the number from though, Scott? Like in reality, if a Depending brand reaches Depending on out, follower. Uh -huh. But now, why are we charging 2,000 for a post? Okay, yeah, that's so you what might, I'm wondering. You might have 200,000 followers, mm -hmm. but, so it's distribution. Okay. But it's also time. Mm. I've got to, like, it's going to take me five hours to create that shot because mm -hmm. I've got to hike four hours. I've got to, you know, so I hike four hours there, four hours back. Mm -hmm. I got to get model up there. I got to design a shot. And are you around communicating good that light. with the brand? Yes. So, oh, okay. so it's just not a post. It's mm -hmm. distribution. Mm -hmm. It's production of the mm -hmm. shot, and then it's um, and it's um, it's an ad that they can then put money behind. Sure. So you're really giving them an ad. So yeah. it's not just two K for a post for your distribution. <laughs> it's production of a shot yeah. and whatever. So say it's showing three, the value three behind three posts that. times two. So now you're at six thousand okay. dollars. So now you're at ten five. Yeah. Um, and then 10 images and they want to license 10 images. Mm -hmm. So I would say, and it, it, this is all up for depends on the brand, whatever on the person, but usually, and I've seen what mm -hmm. I've seen is anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars per image for a year licensing. Okay. And so that's global universal. That's global. That's whatever 10, use they that's want. from what I've seen. Yep. I don't ever have seen much more. You can get more, maybe mm -hmm. depends, but, but then you put 10, but that's per year. Yeah. So they want to renew oh, it. True. It's okay. unlimited use. So they mm -hmm. can use it in a billboard. They can use it in a brochure. Mm -hmm. They can use it in digital. But then that's 10 times a thousand. That's $10,000. Mm -hmm. So now you're at 2,500. 20, 20, 20,500. Yeah, yeah. And you can throw in some another line item, mm -hmm. gas, expenses, models. So maybe you're getting two models out and you're paying them a thousand bucks each. Mm -hmm. And then you've got gas and you've got a hotel for the night, two hotels. Yeah. So those Meals, are expenses. Whatever. Comes up to, so you send your budget in, it's $24,000. But a brand looks at it and then goes, I can justify this mm -hmm. because I see the value because brands love seeing things broken up. Okay. They love, they don't, they like to know what they am I getting? What am I of... getting? And then they look and go, that makes sense to me because mm -hmm. they know what they pay in the real world yeah. when you do a billboard. Do a studio if I were to go whatever. produce a commercial and hire a production team to mm -hmm. produce a commercial, I'm paying fifty, seventy five thousand dollars. I need all these. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They know, and then they got to take that ad and they got to put it somewhere on a billboard, mm -hmm. and they got to pay money for it to sit on that billboard, or they have to pay for it to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Put it in a magazine and pay for it in a newspaper. They know the cost. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking at these costs and these are actually not that big of numbers. In our minds, sometimes we think oh, that's a lot. I mean, it sounds like a lot to me. <laughs> You're giving it, but you're producing an ad and that's yeah. not necessarily based on your followers. Mm -hmm. you, if I, if you take the most incredible shot that a brand can take mm -hmm. and put it on a billboard. And I have no followers. Who what cares? does that matter? Yeah. Because the distribution they're looking for is a billboard on the side of the road that's going to mm -hmm. sit there for a year. Mm -hmm. Like, do you see what I'm saying? No, no, I totally A good do. image mm -hmm. is valuable to a brand if, and we're at a point now where people are working with influencers because they get that natural organic reach, but they're also understanding they can pay to play. Mm -hmm. They can whitelist, they can put more money behind it. So they're coming to influencers because they can get ads for significantly cheaper. Yeah, than a so commercial studio. When you charge for a photo or a reel, you are also charging for an ad, not just for distribution. That's good. Because they can okay. push it out. They can make your 10,000 reach person become a, a 2 million reach photo mm -hmm. because they just put money yeah. behind it. If they the photo is epic and awesome, whatever. Yeah. it doesn't matter. And so people, so when I say 
when the brand reaches out to you, find out the deliverables mm-hmm. and then put together a budget. Another thing you could ask is what is your budget? Okay. You know, because often brands will say our budget for this is 25K. Mm-hmm. And you go, okay, let me prepare an estimate. And you mm-hmm. go back and you build that estimate out. Maybe you move some numbers around mm-hmm. so it meets the 25K. Sure. And, and you'd so adjust your deliverables too, you right? Adjust you'd adjust your deliverables. Okay, maybe you make my day rate 1500 because it looks more attractive. And then mm-hmm. I'll bump up the photos to 1250 you know, and I'll, I'll lessen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You just find a mix of them and they look at it and they go, Everything here is good. Mm-hmm. But if it feels exorbitant in one level and that starts to throw them off, okay. but if it all fits in a pocket and they just go, yeah, this makes sense. There's no no drama. And knowing a budget always helps. Yeah. But I find when you break things down line item by line item, it just justifies the cost. Mm-hmm. And then they go, well, what would we remove? Well, okay, well, maybe we'll remove the oh, photo. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because then they we'll can shop around. Maybe we'll remove one photo post. Mm-hmm. And, or maybe we'll take five images. To fit our budget. Whatever. But I'm still getting my day rate. Yeah. You see, oh, I'm still getting okay. it. I and that's guaranteed why the line item. because if someone if you just said ten photos, ten grand. Someone said to me, "Oh, I'm gonna go." You know, they want five photos. I mm-hmm. said, "Well, make sure you charge for a day rate because if you go take five photos mm-hmm. and they're like, we don't like any of these, you get paid nothing." Yes. But now you and get, I have heard. But people. now you get your forty five hundred, <laughs> and then they're almost obligated to buy something because they they're like, we you. already spent the money. Mm-hmm. But make them pay. Mm. Their brand, they got lots of money. But yep. at the end of the day don't get screwed as a creator. So when I feel like you build variety of line items, you're Mm -hmm. putting protection on yourself. Safety. Interesting. Okay, so two different things, I guess. The first would be when it comes to contracts. Do you have a contract? Do they just send the contract? I always, they always send it. I don't have a contract. And they they have a lawyer review it? it? Do you just sign it and hope for the best? No, I have a manager and my manager reviews it for me. But from what I've seen over the years, every contract's the same. Yeah. They all name the same Pretty thing. Pretty basic boilerplate. They're, they're, they're not getcha, I gotcha. <laughs> they're yeah. usually like, this is a three month term. Like you can't work with another mm-hmm. brand in this field. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They just want to know that when they work with you and pay you, that you're not just going to turn around and just like, you know, all of a sudden I'm shooting Sony when I'm oh God, trying yeah, to. Can't. Exactly. It's like, it's mixed messaging. And so yeah. it's, it. Th- from what I have seen, all the contracts I've ever signed mm-hmm. are, are very basic and pretty redundant. Mm-hmm. And you can even push back and say, I don't feel good with this and they'll just change it. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want 90 day exclusivity. I want 60 day. Okay, great. We did that. We changed it. Okay. Do you always meet with a client ahead of time? Like someone reaches out to me, Ryan, I want to work with you, blah, blah, Mm -hmm, blah. mm -hmm. Um, Do I try and get on the phone with them? Do I just write them back? Do I give them an invoice right away? Like what would be So usually, okay. So usually I get on a phone call with them. I find that that's always helpful. There have been clients I have worked with and done jobs that I've never heard their audible voice. Some people just prefer email and they're so like, you know, set it and forget it. And that's what they do. It's like, yeah. here's the brief. You do the brief, you mm-hmm. go, here's your invoice, you know, and sometimes it's 50% up front and the rest 60 days after the deliverables are done. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, you get paid and they come back with more work. And it's just like, it's a whole business transaction. Then there's other people where you get on a Zoom call and they go, okay, here's the brief. Let's get on a Zoom call and walk through the campaign. Mm-hmm. You get on a call with the agency. It's usually agency, not client. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you they just walk you through, here's our focus for the next six months. Here's um, campaign one, two, three. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to do these three activations over the next six months. And I um, just want to make sure, you're sure this is where we're going. And this is kind of the content we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are our, here's our mood board. Here's our colors. Here's kind of the themes we're trying to focus on. Mm-hmm. Does everything make sense? Yeah, everything makes sense. And then you get to work. Okay. And you probably don't get on another call with mm-hmm. them. It's an introductory call yeah. and it's just a, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. And you yeah. move on from there. Okay, interesting. Um, so yeah. So then the agency, let's just so anyone who's confused, client means I'm actually Fjall Raven. Yeah. Agency is who's yeah. representing, that's they've right. hired somebody else yeah. to go and find the talent yeah. and whatever, right? Yeah. So very rarely you speak to clients. That's good to know. Very rarely. So when you're reaching out and DMing people or like you're, whatever. You're, you're most likely speaking to an agency who's who managing manages their channel. social media. Okay. Or, or uh, and here's the thing is some, some um, agencies manage multiple brands. So yeah, when you send I was say. the same message, to like five brands <laughs> sometimes like, it's the uh, same one that like yeah we're on to isn't that interesting um but the thing is so you do want to be specific in your in your in dms what you do, yeah. and name the brand and, mm-hmm. and make specific and tailor content. the message yeah. don't copy paste because it feels copy paste but um more often than not i sometimes i have spoke to client it is very very rare hmm. um and i the client's so busy. Mm-hmm. They've got so much going on, yeah. especially the bigger they are. Business. They're yeah. in a business. That's why they hire agencies and agencies take care of those activations and mm-hmm. different activations for different things. You know, there's social, then there's commercial, then there's billboard. And, you know, would you say that in general, when you're starting out, when you're intermediate, whatever, 
Do you start with smaller brands and then work your way up to the big ones? Or is it just like the big I ones said, are the ones who have the my, money? Mine was the big ones first. It was just my story is not normal. Because I find that sort of I interesting, just want to right? Keep like that. Little brands don't always have much budget and they ask you to do things for free. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, little brands will. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Ten little jobs will kill you. <laughs> because you, it, those brands are the most needy. You're doing the most work. Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, you're just like... Uh, you know, the bigger the client and they're so busy, Mm -hmm. they're producing so much content all the time and they've got so much money that they, they don't really bother you. Mm -hmm. Like they get the work, they're happy, they move on. Mm -hmm. Um, as whereas, you know, if, if you're a small brand, this is your, you know, your entire marketing budget, I got 2k, which Mm -hmm. no, no problem if that's all you got, but I need 20 photos. Mm -hmm. They're going to be very scrutinous over the images because that's all they're investing in everything they have. And Mm -hmm. that's not a problem, but, it takes a lot to create 20 images for 2K. 20 great images. Yeah, they're like, I'll pay you 50 bucks an image. You're like, do you know how long it takes me to take a photo? Unless it's like literally like a white wall with product. Yeah. You know, it's like boom, 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 boom. I pop those out in an hour. Mm-hmm. Like that's different. But if they're like, we want lifestyle, we want you go yeah, to the mountains. We want hero shots. Like I got an email one time, we go to the mountains and take a photo of the subscription box and like it, and we'll give you the subscription box. It's valued at $99. And that was the payment. I'm mm-hmm. like, like, are you joking me? My, that won't even cover my gas. Mm-hmm. And I don't want this box, <laughs> you know? So like, I'm going to go drive to the mountains and create this epic what shot. What if it was a really nice box? It wasn't. Like um, an Apple box. No, but- it, that's different, but it was not <laughs> Apple. Uh, and it's like, well, it's $99 retail, but what's the cost? What mm-hmm. is it? $30? <laughs> so now I'm driving, paying gas, putting myself mm-hmm. in a situation of best light, creating the shot so I can keep a box that I never asked for. Mm-hmm. So you've got to ask yourself, what's the return for you? Mm-hmm. Like, are you actually getting something out of it? And maybe mm-hmm. that getting out of it for you is brand equity. Maybe yeah. you're like, okay, this is worth it because I'm yeah. starting out and I want to prove concept. You get the portfolio. I want to, yeah. you know, put my, I want to, for the next six months, I want to shoot brand stuff and show what I can do. Mm-hmm. Then that's your equity. Yeah, is that's your, how you're getting paid. You're investing into building a portfolio and, mm-hmm. and defining yourself as someone who does sponsored work and that will carve out a way for you. But when you get really busy, you can't necessarily take those jobs. And sometimes I'm just like, man, I could either work for a boot company and do all this work to get a free pair of boots or I could just go buy the boots. Mm, I have been there. In the few You're product like, reviews I have done, I'm yes. like, never again. You're like, man, I, <laughs> this boots will only cost me 250 yeah, but, but I worked three days Three to do days, this. Yeah, and I went and trenched in the snow. And It's you know, a real thing. And, yeah. it's, a, and our, it's a mind shift mm-hmm. where you're like, just go buy the boots. <laughs> <laughs> and then just go make money elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's all like ebbs and flows, right? It depends where you're at in your journey mm-hmm. and what you, um, you know, what you are looking for. And sometimes mm-hmm. someone might say, we'll give you $3,000 worth of, of our gear mm-hmm. for, and you're like, I love that gear. And, and so, there's no payment. But to me, that's amazing gear. I would wear that gear every day. Mm-hmm. Those are nice jackets and nice adventure gear that's going to help my journey. That is yeah. nice too because the picture. you buy three, three $1,000 jackets, that's $3,000. Mm-hmm. But I can do two photos for that and yep. boom, that is that is a good trade. It just depends. There's ebb and flow in value, mm-hmm. you know, and it comes to really what you want, what they want. It's like the difference, like I said, about you yeah. approaching the client versus them coming to you. Sure. So... Okay, here's a really interesting one. When you're actually doing these experience trips and you're working, doing that amazing influencer lifestyle, how do you line item that? Like, does that question even make sense? Yeah, because so some I find that trips, it's a mixture. Some pay, some don't. Mm-hmm. Um, some Sometimes you get an offer and say, here's the value. Mm -hmm. We'll fly you here, put you in these hotels, give you these experiences. It's a 15K offering, but we only want three reels. There's no compensation. Mm -hmm. And then you got to ask yourself, do I want to do that? And then you ask yourself also, can I bring a different sponsor or a brand into that story where, oh, okay, okay. I, I brought another brand. So a, you reach out and say, hey, I'm going to A jacket here, company, blah, blah, blah. a suitcase company, mm-hmm. or so, you know, a tech company, and you get paid to, for two mm-hmm. posts during, because you're and in these an are epic people place. you've already worked with Exactly, in the past. and say, hey, I'm going to Bali, and you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's in, you know you're going to be in beautiful places, and yeah. it's easy for you to do two sponsored posts because you're going to have so much content, and so you got the free trip. Mm-hmm. And you figure out a creative way. And you still got paid. Yeah. I love that. So there's that, Mm -hmm. number one. And then option two is the tourism board, usually because travel is usually related to a tourism board. Sure. um, And they will pay you. How much much for four reels, 
two posts and you know 10 images and then you build it out and, and how they, do you get to know and those they do people. the trip i know those are the ones you want to know yeah. and <laughs> everybody wants to know them and i've had a few of those yeah and then but i i also know that anybody that's traveling full-time is mm -hmm. they're getting a mixture of paid and a mixture of yeah. of in in kind exchange mm -hmm. and they're leveraging the in kind exchange with a brand partnership mm -hmm. some way somehow yeah uh, right. and so it's just being savvy to that and mm -hmm. so not everybody, and then you could go, okay, mm -hmm. you could go and pitch a tourism board with a budget and they could say, well, we've got 10 people that will go for free. Sure. Why are they going to pay you? Mm. Because everybody wants to go to Iceland. Yeah. You know, everybody <laughs> wants to go to Bali. It's so true. You All know, those spots. But then there's other tourism boards where people don't want to go. Edmonton. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you, Edmonton. We love you, Edmonton. Those people pay. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, they know. Because, but it's true. And it's not that they're the bad places. They just might not have the exposure. But they're not on everybody's yet, bucket right? list, yeah, exactly. right? But they need the content. Mm -hmm. And tourism boards have money yeah. because they have their ways of getting their money from budgets and however those flows work down from mm -hmm. state to government to however they work, you know, yeah. municipalities. Um, but... It just depends what their need is, right? Mm -hmm. Like they might have, so there so are communities that have I'm, bigger budgets. So <laughs> you might go, I'm going to go create content for the people that nobody's paying attention to. Mm. And you're going to make that's a your lot strategy of money. And you're that guy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's say I'm going to Bangladesh. I reach yeah. out to the tourism board. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I could do some stuff for you. Yeah. They get back. They're like, okay, how much? Right. How do you figure out that number? Because government work, like they've got these... How do you even know? You could say, here's what I typically charge. Oh, okay. But I'm open. Okay, yeah, I like so that. Here's what I charge for yeah. real, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I had that with a client recently. I said, here's my normal rates. And they came back and said, this is a bit high for us. Mm -hmm. um, is there a wiggle room? I said, absolutely. Okay. You know, and then you find out where they're comfortable. And yeah. then if you're comfortable, and you can adjust forward, your deliverables you or whatever. Yeah. Because if you're still getting paid, mm -hmm. To you're do already something, going and you're still winning. Mm -hmm. Like it might not be necessarily what you asked for, but if you're still getting paid to do what you love, you're doing you're good. Winning. You're winning. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're traveling. Yeah. You know? So let's just say that you're, you're doing this thing. It's like, I want to be in your shoes. Yeah. Um, obviously it's not going to happen right away. There's going to be a time delay. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to consistently post for X amount of time. Yeah. Like just realistically, what do you think is the, I need to commit to this and like keep going and not give up and not get discouraged too early. Like what is that time length of time you need to really go? I mean, think? I've seen it different for everybody. Yeah, I know. It's an impossible I would question. Say, I would say, you know, six months to a year. If it's okay. not happening after a year, mm -hmm. you've got to sit down and go, what, where am I going wrong? Yeah. Cause am I not connected missing. to the right people? Mm -hmm. Am I not taking the right content? You know, it's amazing. I can do events. Mm -hmm. um, we can, you know, with SoCal, we do these events and you know, 200 people come and the content that comes out, it's like some content is so incredible mm -hmm. and same person, same di different person, same place okay. can produce a terrible image. Mm. Yeah. Some people just don't have what it takes, mm. you know, or don't have a natural eye mm -hmm. or aren't gifted to that. Yeah. And, you know, I remember when I was young, you know, playing sports and when I was in basketball and all that, we were all having fun when you're grade three, grade four. Sure. But as you grow, <laughs> there's a difference there, then people from one be, to another. The right, people yeah. that are really gifted accelerate and mm -hmm. the people that aren't so good. Mm -hmm. And then you say to yourself, I'm not a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this for fun because I, I love on. it. I, I get it. You. You're good. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. People, people naturally accelerate and, you know, and so sometimes in some of these worlds, mm -hmm. some people just are natural and mm -hmm. good and some people, or some people have the ability to figure it out yeah. um, and come up with the right recipe mm -hmm. and some people just will never get there. So I think after, and that's okay, mm -hmm. find your thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, six months to a year, if you... Do have not if tapped through on social truly, like, or, going or for a it. first client, mm -hmm. then you need to rethink what are you doing wrong? Are you not mm -hmm. meeting the right people, getting connected, is it the collaborating, skills, the, portfolio? the skills, is your work not consistent enough? Are you telling the right story? Are you mm -hmm. coming out of the noise? Mm -hmm. Are you just part of, are you just re regurgitating content? Are you actually telling a different story? Mm -hmm. Have you identified your brand, your voice, your colors, your imagery? Like those are things to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, uh, you know, six months to a year after consistent posting and having uh, and really focusing on one thing, you should see growth. Okay. I'll give you an example. Sure. I grew on Instagram. Yeah. I grew on TikTok. Okay. I'm and TikTok's like 10 years later. I'm now growing on YouTube shorts. Okay. Why? It's the same consistent principle. Mm. Just post content that people like mm -hmm. and do it consistently mm -hmm. and you will grow. 
it's it's not that I'm amazing. Mm. It's literally not that. It's not that. It's yeah. when I started TikTok, nobody was like, oh, who's you know? They're mm -hmm. like, oh, I like this video. Oh, I like this next one. Oh, I like the, oh, I like this guy. Follow this guy. Yeah, yeah. I love your content. Yeah. Consistency is king. Mm -hmm. And if you just get on anything, it's the same with YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you really want to be in YouTube and you YouTube every day yeah. and you go and you carve out a niche, you will grow. Mm. You will grow. But very few people will actually do that is the funny this thing, This is the right? difference. Like, and that's if what you are not growing after a year, mm -hmm. then you've got to go, I haven't figured out the formula. Yeah. There, and, and if you're not growing after a year yeah. and you look back, most people tell themselves like, yeah, yeah. I've been trying so hard. And totally. then you actually looks like you had 30 posts over an entire that's year. It. Like, that's okay. It. Or let's, let's Let's think about this. And I have seen photographers show me images mm -hmm. and they think it's amazing. Mm. And they, Isn't that the worst? And you're like, and you're like, this is so bad. I like, so relate. The composition is wrong. You cut off the person's feet. Yeah. You know, Whatever. you cut off their hand. You know, you can't the side of the face. Yeah. Like just the lens cap was on. Did, they, I think because they think, oh, it's in focus, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, look at this. Celebrate the small the things. Colors. Scott, okay. And I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just saying some people have it and mm. some people like I mean, Jonathan, my business partner. His images, like I'll be in the same spot mm -hmm. and he'll come out with these images and I'll just want to throw my camera in the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's, he's just got that. He's got that thing. Whatever. And he just knows. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think I get a good comp or I was hanging out with Garrett mm -hmm. Shortstash and, and he's showing me his camera reel from the same boat ride yeah. I was on. Like You're right next to the guy. I'm like, I was in the <laughs> same view. Uh -huh. You know, and so I'm yeah. just saying even me, like there are people like I'm, I'm just saying mm -hmm. there's always going to be someone that can outdo you. Yeah. Always. And it's because it's the same as a basketball thing. Mm -hmm. There will be people that just are way better than you naturally. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And if you can just get your little piece of the pie and go, mm -hmm. I found my corner. I found my world. I'm happy in this world. Yeah. And you can still say, I'm choosing to accelerate. I'm mm -hmm. choosing to figure this out. Or maybe you might go, okay, you too. Mm -hmm. I want to be the most cinematic creator. Or you might go, you know what? I want to be the most entertaining creator. Mm -hmm. Because maybe I'm not the best, but I can so, certainly be the funniest. Yeah, because or the... I don't understand all the tech behind it, but I <laughs> yeah. turn, I know how to push record and mm -hmm. I know how to upload that. And I know how to work. And so maybe you're like, I want to be the most entertaining. Maybe mm -hmm. you're like, I want to be the most informative mm -hmm. or I want to be the most, you know what I mean? Oh, that's so good. And so it's just, it's, and find your place. And so you might go, I couldn't take the greatest image, mm -hmm. but man, I'm funny. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and hopefully you are, you know, and so play to that strength. It's true. Find your, play and don't to the be, strength. And don't be discouraged. Don't be like, oh man, I'm just can't, I'm not going to be as good as Jonathan or, mm -hmm. or short stash. Be like, what's my thing? Yeah. What makes you me have your thing? You have your thing. Yeah. And then that, and that you want to do that anyway. You don't mm -hmm. want to be like, man, I'm trying to just be Garrett number two. Yeah. Cause even you, if you were like amazing, you want to be Scott still number gonna, one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Specifically, Scott. specifically Scott number one. <laughs> Me, I hope so. But uh, but I'm saying that to say if so to answer your question, if mm -hmm. it's not happening after a year, because yeah. these are formula platforms. Mm -hmm. You follow the formula. You follow, you the, follow formula. the recipe. You get. The I outcome. have seen yeah. it, Ryan, time and time again. People come to Calgary. They get mm -hmm. networked in. They start collaborating, creating. They mm -hmm. blow up on social. They get commercial work. They're starting a business. Yep. They're on their own. They are flying. Mm -hmm. I have seen that time and time and time and time again. But it is still work. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional. You have to be yeah. consistent. It's you simple. have to do the work. It's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's yeah. That is the difference. Mm -hmm. If you're expecting it to just drop it in your hat. And I saw one person one time, they got reached out to by a client and said, how much to life's in this image? Mm -hmm. And they thought this was their golden ticket. Okay. Nothing's your golden ticket. Mm. Not one job is your golden ticket. Consistency is your ticket. Mm -hmm. Doing it, getting in the business, getting paid for what you love, that's your golden ticket. You'll never just, unless you win the lottery or build an app and sell it to Facebook. <laughs> That would be a golden ticket. Wouldn't it be nice? But, you know, wouldn't it be nice? But for the normal person, mm -hmm. you know, it's still an industry. It's still average rates. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, if you're working a server job, you're getting paid industry rates. But if you're working uh, this kind of a job, there are industry rates. You can't be like, I'm charging you $50,000 to put this on a billboard. They'll mm -hmm. be like, we'll just go produce With someone it else. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That is amazing. And for anybody who is like feeling maybe a little discouraged. I'm not discouraged. looking at the camera. So no, hi. that's okay. <laughs> hi. Anyone who's feeling a little discouraged by that. I, I don't think they are. I this is my good are. side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, 
I can so relate with your story of like, right. okay, first you you found it on Instagram, yeah. then you found it on TikTok, then you found it on YouTube Shorts. Well, I'm finding it formula. on YouTube Shorts. So watch yeah. out, I'm okay, becoming in, a YouTuber. In the process, that's right. <laughs> in two years from now, and, like, and, and I can subscribe. Because I, hands down, like if, if you picked out people on a basketball court running yeah. around, like yeah. there's the guy who's running in the opposite direction. Yeah. There's yeah. the ones who are really playing. And I was yeah. like somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I'm totally. like, by no means You're the like, worst. I like this. <laughs> yeah, but I am so far from the best or most talented at any of this stuff. In fact, I find most of the time when I walk into the room i'm like i'm the one learning yeah. which is a great place to be yeah but you're like that you're like a sponge yeah i'm like, I'm yeah. like a sponge you're like a sponge you take it in <laughs> which very is delicate you're very good so anyways my point is that like <laughs> i just showed up on youtube my yeah. videos are definitely like so low quality compared to when i look at anybody else right. i'm looking at some someone like sam newton who's just like unbelievably right. good of at course. what he's doing of course. and i'm like oh man can't do that like that's just i don't have that gift right. and that eye that he yeah. has but i can show up yeah and i can press that's record it. and i can that's it. you know i can lean into what it is that i've got maybe i think that's a key leaning into your thing that you can do mm -hmm. well and if for you if it's super simple lean into it mm -hmm. Don't over complicate the process because if people are like, man, now I need this epic intro and I need this. And then they just put a whole bunch of roadblocks. Yeah. And they never do anything. And then, and then you feel like, overwhelmed because mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. Honestly, I started taking photos of my iPhone because you yeah. push a button in the <laughs> and square and you upload it. You wash <laughs> it through Visco app, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day, yeah. put it through Visco, yeah. throw on A9 or C8, boom. Sure. And Classics. you post and everyone's like, wowzers, <laughs> you know? And so... Simplify the process for you. Mm -hmm. And as you grow and as you scale into it, maybe you're like, you know, I want to up my editing skills. And you will grow you just will by grow doing into it. it. And start with what you have. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest key is start with what you have and don't be intimidated. You look at Sam Newton. You're not going to do be Sam Newton tomorrow. No. But you got to work your way there and you yeah. might even work yourself into a whole new way mm -hmm. a whole new feel a whole yeah. new look that you found where you found your thing you're like this is what i am yeah. and this is what i do and this is identifiably me mm. and and you might even be happier as a result because if you try to be way sam newton happier. like that shoe will never fit that shoe so, will never fit anyways awesome I, this has been so good, good. chat i yeah. hope it's been informative <laughs> yeah you want to head in and actually look at some images together uh, yeah let's do yeah? it okay. yeah let's do it <laughs> So um, as we're doing this, I'm like I said, up. I am. Uh, my edits are super simple. Yeah. Um, and so if you're watching this, I hope you got a lot of value of what I just said. Because like <laughs> I said, my images are are. Um, it's about getting it right in camera. It's about the getting composition. It right in camera. The, That's it. And how much do you think gear? Like how how much does gear play into I the think equation? Well, I think gear is important. Sure. I think obviously you, you, your gear is only as good as your composition and, and lighting and scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, having a good lens, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, is super important. And and why does it make a difference? Like, let's say the 35L versus the 35, the $300 versus the $1,800. Ooh, now you're asking me big questions. Uh, do um, you... I think sharpness. Okay. I think sharpness for sure. Depth of field in mm -hmm. some images, you know, mm -hmm. be able to do, go to... Um, uh, the f stop, you know, some of them are just four, four. If you mm -hmm. can get to like a one, do you notice the four. colors are different too? Yeah, or? The color sharpness, okay. bokeh, you know, yeah. and you know, like I said, if the f stops four, but you can get to one point eight, sure, with some the lenses, big difference there, totally, yeah. And so you can get some more bokeh, um, sharper lenses, faster, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, it just depends um, what you want. You get compression when you get the seventy two hundred, mm -hmm. and so you know you wouldn't get that with you know your fifteen to thirty five. And mm -hmm. so it just depends. Obviously, fifteen to thirty five. The wider you go, sometimes it stretches things out. You know, when photos when you like my legs are really long in that. You know, <laughs> it's like whoa, I look like I have long legs. Mm -hmm. So you know the right lens. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I feel like if you're in a canoe and you're like taking a shot from above, having that really wide lens gives like that super like you know, just it's so wide looking and mm -hmm. so big, mm -hmm. you know, it really makes everything look so large. It's sometimes it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, and you can't get that if you've got like a 70 on, mm -hmm. you're like going to miss the mountains. And so then you have to have a really beautiful person or, you know, a great subject <laughs> that you're shooting. For well, yeah, it's like at least the person, you know, look, it's <laughs> yeah. a model, you I know, have something to look with, at. That, with some cool color in the background. Mm -hmm. So it just depends what you're shooting, but lenses hugely important. Um, but like I said, I shot a whole commercial, my very first commercial yeah. campaign on, You're a, pretty established on by a 6D, the time you, 6D mm -hmm. and 24 to 70 lens. There you go. You had 2.8. One lens, one camera. Commercial. And nowhere near on, what you get now for a $500 billboards camera. Billboards and, yeah. and in-store campaigns for a major telecom company there across Canada with a 6D. And so people sometimes think, oh, I need this camera because it's the megapixels. It's like, guys, like 
I did it on a 6D. You only need so much, mm -hmm. you know? And so you have a beautiful composition and good light, and you're good to go. Yeah. It's like painting. I mean, you can mm -hmm. have a million different paints, and I'm right. sure they come in different qualities. Totally. But at the end of the day, it's the artist who makes the bigger difference than the paint. So, okay. Scott, let's start doing some editing. If you would head into the grid view for me, I would love to for take sure. a look at kind of your work. And let's yeah. just talk about your process a little bit when it comes to in camera, like right. getting the light, getting the settings. Right. Like, what are you doing? Walk me through a couple of images. Yeah. Well, so, okay. So, so, this was actually mm -hmm. more rain lake at two in the afternoon. Okay. Um, which was awesome because mm -hmm. it, this was during larches. And so it's very busy, but we got in. Mm -hmm. um, but the lake was still, you know? And so it was like, oh man, the lake is so still. And this was two in the afternoon. So usually it's wavy if it's windy, but I'm like, man, we're getting solid content. So, but here with this composition, a couple things, you know, is I really like the foreground of the fall colors. So mm. it's identifying fall, mm -hmm. obviously that with the blue. So I'm like, I'm loving the mix that there's foreground. Then you see the mini person, which just accentuates the, you know, the mountains. Mm -hmm. And so trying to get in this, if you look at it from the ground up, you see foreground of the, the, the um, foliage, then you see a little guy, <laughs> Garrett, to enhance the space. Mm -hmm. You see blue lake, reflection and then you see enough sky mm. um, and one thing to notice with commercial imagery mm -hmm. is you do want to leave sky because if someone ever wants to put text somewhere oh, where do they put it so okay. you always whether you're so shooting landscape space, or portrait guess, right? you want some negative space if you're shooting commercial because often a brand wants to put imagery there sure. or, most or, of the time or, there is or text, text on something exactly. in some way shape or form so okay. if, if I didn't have any sky there mm -hmm. where would they put the image the and so text? are you thinking like is this aiming for a third a third a third is totally kind of, so okay. everything's in the thirds right mm -hmm. and so I'm I know that when I'm taking this photo, I also need room to crop for mm -hmm. Instagram. So, because this is going to be four by five. Yeah. So, I'm going to lose something somewhere. From the top so, bottom, I've right? got enough sky to lose and I've got enough foliage to lose. Interesting. So, and Garrett will still end up in the third, okay. you know, in the middle. So, a subject is centered, mm -hmm. super important. Um, but if you look at everything here, you can see the flow from your eyes of, of the way it goes from foliage to little person to blue to mm -hmm. sky, mountain to sky. Yeah. Um, um, and I had a, enough clearing. See, there's that tree to the left, but I've got enough clearing that you can still see the whole landscape. Because mm. sometimes when you're at this place, you can get a lot of trees in the way that block the view. So you've got to, sometimes you move your body, sometimes mm. you move your lens. It just depends what you're doing. All right, so I'd love to see how you actually edit this image. Okay. So what I do is I take a whole bunch of images and then I go through and I rate them. Mm. And with my camera, I can actually rate them In on camera, my camera. Right? So Which I can cool. go back and go, yeah, and you can put one star, two star, three star. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I'm reviewing, it just makes my process a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, but I always go through and then and go through and star them. And then I go in to go through what I really, really like. And so what do you say, like 10 images, 30 images? 10. 10? 10. 10. Okay. Because I look at everything from his stance. Mm -hmm. You know what stands to it? Like, I like that he's holding his, he's got like this cool, what film they camera, call it, film right? camera recorder. Yeah. yeah. So it's like vintage. It's small enough, but you can see he's taking a photo. I really want one. Yeah, they're cool. So the first thing I do is I want to crop the photo. Okay. So I want to get in a four by five and see what it looks by four by five. And I go, okay, mm -hmm. um, let's just move that. So I know that there he is in the third. And one thing I'm pumped on is I still have that tree. Okay. Because some people would go, they would you cut the tree and try it's and crop like, it out. No, because like there, you're oh miss, the top of the tree. You're, That's what you you're mean. the top of the tree. You're okay. missing the mount. Some people do this, mm. and it bothers me. It's like <laughs> you're missing the peaks, mm -hmm. you know. And so, uh, but like just move him just so he's on the top of that line. I feel like I'm Bob Ross. But then I'm like <laughs> pumped because when I took the photo, yeah. I was like, I made sure this has to crop because mm -hmm. whenever you're taking photos, make sure so you're it crops. always shooting a little wider. Well, than if you you're think. shooting for Instagram, yeah. you know, um, you want it to crop. So got it. Then I go done. Boom. That's step number one. Kay. So I'm like, wow, that looks good already. Right. And actually, crop. I might even go just a little bit more. Just and yeah. so this was shot on your sixteen thirty or fifteen thirty five. Yep. What would you say is the like if you have one lens to shoot on? You know, I have my 15 to 35, I have my 28 to 70 2.0, and I have my 70 200. Mm -hmm. um, in the early days, um, I would always really default to my 15 to 35. But I'm loving my 28 to 70. Mm. Um, and so uh, as for Moraine, I always need the 15 yeah, just to depends 35. depends on the situation. It just calls for it. But more often than not, the 28 to 70 is not leaving my body. Okay. Um, and I'm loving that camera. Um, and so... All right, so we got the crop. 
Go out the crop. So the, f- f- like I said, you guys get ready for some very basic. And are but these presets you, you've built over time? These or? are presets that I either built or purchased from people I like, mm-hmm. or, you know, um, I have a whole bunch of old Visco used to, um, sell for desktop. Yeah. And so I've got a whole Visco All set in here. Okay. Uh, and I wish they still did it cause they were awesome. They were good actually, but I still have them. Um, so, you know, but what it is, is like, okay, find the colors that you love. So naturally it looked good, but mm-hmm. what I want to pull out is the blues and the orange. So I'm going to go through, um, and I have my favorites. I always go to, right? Sure. But like, that's just too much. Um, so I'm just going through seeing what I like. And what but I want to point out while you're doing this, yeah. like not all of them, but a vast majority of these photos, the presets look amazing. Yeah. They're just different. They're just different. And that's because the lighting is so good. The composition totally. is so good. So like every preset works. That's why so. I'm saying if you start with a good image, <laughs> mm-hmm. my editing process is not intense. Yeah. It's boring. So get ready to be bored. Okay. So I've chosen this one. Yeah. Um, the Jay-Z base. Jay-Z base. The and, then, and then what I'm going to do is literally I first start with just lifting up exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, just seeing what needs to be done there. Maybe go up to the temperature. Mm-hmm. And just see what I like. Um, see, and sometimes you can push it so far just to go, how extreme can you go? Yeah. Where you don't want an image to go where it was people are looking through on the grid and they go, wow, that's a bad edit, you know, <laughs> or that's too intense. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's too orangey or too saturated. So, I'm trying to find middle ground. So, actually, I'm happy there. So, I might play with the highlights. You know, it's a bit dark. There, so, bring that up. Um, so I, I work my way down mm-hmm. shadows. You don't ever want to do that too much. Cause I find that it's just, I don't, I don't really like the way that looks mm-hmm. play with the white. So everything right now is just playing, you know, finding what I like, what's going to bring me closer. Mm-hmm. I stay away kind of from these, the clarity and the dehaze. I don't really use it a lot. Okay. Vibrance. Okay. Let's bring it up. Okay. Right away. I'm pumped. Mm. What a difference. I see those blues. I'm pretty pumped on that. Um, saturation, not so much. I might just give it a little one or two. Then I come down here. These are my favorite, the hues of saturated the luminance. Mm-hmm. I usually start with this and I go to the blues first. I default to blues yeah. just because of where I live. Sure, Everything, there's always a lake, mountain. The, the colors in Alberta are very gray in the mountains, very blue in the lakes, and obviously with the, the fall foliage. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to go to the blue first and just play around here and just go, what looks vibrant but realistic? Okay. You know, it's like, that's too much. Mm. That's just like, that's cooked. Like that's been in the kitchen, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't want, I don't want anyone to ever look at an image and go, that's cooked. Yeah. There's no way that was real. Some whatever. people do that. Mm. And it's like, it's we, we just call cooking it in the kitchen, you know? <laughs> and so I'm like happy with that. That's good to me. Now I come up to the oranges cause that's kind of the next color I'm focusing on and just seeing how that's changing it. And I'm like, mm, I'm pretty actually happy with that. And then honestly, I don't do much more with that. I'm just mm-hmm. like, okay, maybe, maybe play with the yellow. Okay, I, I move that one a bit. And then luminance, I come over here and I go back to the blue because the, these are the colors I'm primarily focusing on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I actually like that. It brings out it a bit more. And then I'm like, let's go back up to the orange. All right. And then what I do is I will come now and I'm like, I'm almost happy with this image. Mm-hmm. Like this is almost done in my mind. Okay. I go, okay, I'm going to take a look at this, though. This feels a little bit dark. So I'm going to come over here and grab the brush. And you're on the old version of Lightroom. Oh, probably. I need to update. Oh, my gosh. You've got some secrets in store for you. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to do this. Just on that one little point? No. Oh, he's going for it. I'm just going to see. I'm testing. I'm testing and Mm -hmm. testing. That's what I'm seeing a lot in your process. It's like, oh, does this look good? Let's try it. That's the thing. It's like you just have a go, right? So I'm painting this. Um, I feel like Bob Ross. And then obviously (laughs) you want to just mirror where the reflection of the trees is Mm. just a bit. And all this is just stuff that you're considering. I'm not saying I'm happy with this Mm -hmm. or anything. but um, And then I go like this. And then I come up here. And I go to custom and I do exposure and I just lift it up a bit. And I'm like, oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like the way it pops a bit more, you know? Okay. Um, and maybe the shadows down a bit. So I see the trees, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, mm, I like that. It just test the black. Yeah, the trees, not a black And then mass. honestly, I'm like pretty pumped on this. Okay. Um, and then I'm like, maybe let's go back to exposure one more time. Mm-hmm. And now let's lift up the whole image. And I'm like, ah. Oh, that's good. I'm happy there. I love it. Now, what you might do, and some people might do this, is go back to here 
and say maybe these mountains here, I don't know, let's just see because they're so far in the distance. Mm -hmm. Maybe, just maybe. You test it and you, if you don't like it, you don't like it. But have a play um, and maybe let's just do the whole thing. Let's just go. Maybe we can pull something out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the good thing I like is like you're, you're not really committing to it. You're just playing mm -hmm. and finding out what you like. Uh, and going, okay, we're going to go back here. And are you editing on the road? Is it in front of a giant iMac most no, of the I'm time? No, I'm editing on this. Okay. I'm so just like... This. I know some people are actually enjoy editing on their iPads. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so actually bringing the exposure down just a bit. Mm, really pops. It made it pop a bit more. So I like that. Maybe let's just te test the temperature. And no, just going back to center. But see, even that little adjustment, mm -hmm. it made it feel that what was a little bit flat to a little bit more bold mm -hmm. um, and made it come alive. And then, I mean, you could play with the blacks and see what you want, maybe just lighten it up a bit. And you go, actually, you know what? There you go. That's my image. It's I love it. It's ready to post. And to me, it feels not that far off from the original. Hmm. You know, this is literally pretty close. The lake is very very blue i was able to highlight in a way that feels still like wow that's a blue lake and yeah it is a blue lake mm -hmm. um it is really blue like that in yeah. real life when you see it but and for like anybody this. wondering like the reason your lakes don't look like this when you rock up at <laughs> I, I don't know some random lake in in this yes. southern virginia whatever yeah, yeah. is because the water is different so this actually different. is this color there's something called rock flower that's under the water okay. that makes it the way the water light hits it oh, it's the rock flower interesting yeah okay so that's so why that's why that's it's just why got a better it's, reflection it's the rock or flower whatever. in the whatever that's what just makes it so and blue. let's let's talk accessories really quick did you okay. have a circular polarizer on here or just i shot did like this? okay i did i did have a polarizer and on do you there. think that made a big difference in this case i think somewhat i obviously makes a bigger difference in more light okay um and but, for anybody wondering that's just to cancel out the reflections that's right cancel reflection and if it's really bright maybe reduce some glare okay um but honestly it was such a moody day that it didn't that no the lake was still and so um so much of it the timing the yeah, light yeah the timing the light the but calm, honestly the, like i'm happy with that image and there mm -hmm. might be people that would go harder sure um and i'm guilty know, of that yeah but <laughs> i would be ha i would post this Beauty. But as you can, uh, can see, you actually show me really quick. So you're gonna post it. What's your export settings for Instagram? What's your export settings for a client? Okay, so ooh, so I would export this. So first of all, I have to figure out where I'm exporting it to. So um, I would export it here in my settings, JPEG. This is it. So client is just 100. percent Yeah. For Instagram, is it also like that? Yes. Just Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you let Instagram thing. take care of the resizing. Totally, the... 100%. Okay, well, there so, you go. Yeah, there you go. Sam's secret. Sam. Sam. <laughs> Sam. Scott's secret recipe. Sam. I don't know about Sam. Sam's secret. <laughs> Sam, thank you. Yeah. Sam Colder is thank our you, guest. Thank you, Sam Colder. Over here, Invisible Sam. We channeled him in here. Um, Beauty, okay. Except I would have no shirt on and have <laughs> abs. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Colder with the abs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, um, what are we hitting next? Okay. What is the story of this image? How did you set it up? How do you so, find the composition? Th this was actually sunrise at mm -hmm. Sea to Sky Gondola in uh, Squamish. Okay. Um, and so it actually was a, a smoky day. Oh, okay. So and that's so, why you got those rays. Yeah. But which, which really, it took forever for the light to come up over the mountain. And we actually had like this kind of scene for like 20 minutes. Wow. And the, and the smoke actually enhanced it. And it was, it was enough smoke that it, it, it still shone through. Um, but um, not enough smoke to make it feel like it's just smoky. Can't see anything. Yeah, yeah, so actually, so once again, start here. Boom, start with my crop. That's Secret the number recipe. one thing I do. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure. And again, you shot it with lots of sky. Yeah, lots, lots of, of sky. Lots of foreground yeah, or whatever. Exactly. Top and bottom. So I want to make sure, boom. I mean, if I put her there, then I feel like I don't get enough on the top, so I might bring her a bit lower. Okay. I just want that sky, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And compositionally, when you shot it, were you thinking about like leading lines or? So obviously trying to get her in the center. Okay. So if you're not happy with that, you know, she's in the center there. Mm -hmm. uh, you could probably just go uh, there. So I always like putting my subject right in the center, mm -hmm. you know, because it just, and the thing is, okay, two things. You could take this photo without a person, but it feels pretty Boring. Boring. Yeah. You know, just the fact is she's got a... a now there's a story. A, she's, basically. There's a girl on there yeah. with a pop of color, you know? So she's, if she was wearing green, problematic. Mm -hmm. She was wearing orange, it pops against the green. That is a great 
tip because you get lost if you wear your typical hiking gear. Totally. And, black and pants, it's just black. like, I can't see you. But mm-hmm. if she had a yellow jacket on, she's got the orange, it just pops it complimentary. Yeah. She stands out. So I like okay. that. So right away, the subject makes the whole image come to life in mm-hmm. my mind. So once again, we started with a crop and we start with, we look at the base. Let's see here what we like. Um, I'm just going to choose something. It's like a lottery. <laughs> tell me when to tell me when to stop. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. But you see, some people might go. I really like. Some people want really moody. Some people want really. You know, it just depends what you're looking mm-hmm. for. Um, see, like that. Like, no, you cannot do that. What I find is interesting is you have so many presets. Like right. So many options. There's so many options. Now you could say, okay, let's go for the mood. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna try this. Okay. okay. This is not how I edited this yeah. photo, but I'm gonna give it a go. So once again, I go back to my start with my exposure, bring it up, and I might go. You know what? I'm not feeling this this preset at all, actually. Okay. You know, I'm like, mm, not your thing. Abandon, abandon. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna come back to. I do use this Jay Z base quite a bit, but uh, let's just reset it. Let's just go back here. Do my crop again. It takes me two seconds. Um, is Jay Z based the Jonathan Zoderman? It is, yeah. Okay. So don't tell anybody. So um, I like that because I know I can play with this. And then I'm going to come up here, temperature. Um, see, that's too orange. Mm-hmm. That looks smoky. Um, do that. Let's play with the mood. See, this brings out that. Let's bring out that highlight. Uh, Shadow up a bit. So now I'm seeing, okay, I need some color here. This mm. is feeling pretty, you know, mm, don't like that. So let's come down here. Let's figure this out. You know, this is what it is. It's like figuring out now we were dealing with smoke. And sometimes you're like, that mm. looks so good, but I can really see the smoke, you know, mm-hmm. um, the yellow, mm. um, blues. No, not really making a difference. And so what I love about this so much is why you're doing that, figuring it out. That's the thing. It's like, you know, it, different images yeah. require different. Like, I remember when I went to Iceland, like the way I edited there was so different mm-hmm. than I'm used to these blues and oranges in Alberta. Like, yeah, different and you colors. go you go to BC and it's very greens mm. and, you know, it's very much like those neutrals are greens yeah. and browns. Yeah. And so you've really got to figure it out and go, not every style is every color. So even then the orange comes a little bit live. The green, let's pull out some greens. Okay, a little bit more. Get rid of this orange and this yellow. Uh-huh. That's funny. I used to think that editing style was all like something you did in Lightroom. And then I could never get my photos to look the way I wanted. Then I moved down to California mm-hmm. and I started shooting there. And all of a sudden my photos looked exactly how I wanted. Totally. Because the landscape totally. <laughs> was just different yeah. colors. So And so I just brought down the exposure a bit mm-hmm. and go, actually, you know, I'm getting a vibe here. Let's play again with this. Very cool. And just starting to do that. Let's go with Vibrance. Pop it a bit. There's mm-hmm. the green now popping. Okay, now okay. I'm getting happy with this image. All right. Now I'm getting happy, and I'm probably going to come and do my brush, and I'm probably going to brush up here. going to make it bigger, and I'm just going to test it and mm-hmm. see how we go. Okay. Like I said, not committing, testing and trying, but I know that this is kind of like, because the light ray is so such a dramatic part of the story, mm-hmm. you really do want people to go, wow, that light, yeah. you know, when they're commenting. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm knowing right away what people will say about this image. They're going to mm. say, wow, that and that's light. That's just based on experience, right? They're going to say, they're going to comment about the light, you know? Mm-hmm. They just are, because you've got this cool light ray, so I really want to try and make that light ray pop, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, get rid of that yellow, that orangey... You know, there you go. I always find um, it fascinating watching what somebody else does because it's often the opposite of what I would do. You could now use the dehaze, you know, and just like kind of feel it. Okay. Out again. So it, it's all like just really, trial what is and the, error, you right? know, trial and error. And that's the thing. You've got to give yourself the the freedom to play mm. and then, um, you know, and then come back again and just go, am I happy with these colors? Let's play around a bit more. You know, maybe the exposure, maybe this is just kind of a moody image overall, you know, maybe we're this more moody there. So I'm actually feeling good about that. Mm -hmm. Vibrance, let's see about, let's bring up that vibrance again. Okay. Mm. I don't mind this. So there's not been a lot done, but I like this. Can we see before and after? Okay. Command Z. Yeah, the original and the after. So you see, here you go. Okay. So let me show you the before and after. So... 
There you go. Look at that. It's not that much different. Yeah. Most of it you got in most camera. Most of it. But most of it you got in camera. And I think that's the key mm -hmm. is you start with a solid image. Mm -hmm. You already start with it. And like, and you have to remember too, some of these images, if it's commercial, but some of them it's just Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's going to, people are going to double tap and move on. Yeah. So, you know, get the image, get the colors you like, you know, but I feel like this image has the light ray. It's got the girl in the dress. It's mm -hmm. got the bridge. It's sweeping. It's, you know, feels cinematic to me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like it. But when you do go to different landscapes, you will get different colors. You do have to adjust some presets or editing styles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's Based like around. if you go to a desert, you know, you're yeah. dealing with like browns. Not a lot of green there. No, you're dealing with like browns and like, you know, you would really have to work with the light and shadows mm -hmm. and tones. So, um, but here you are dealing with a lot of greenery and, and this is sunrise again. So there you mm -hmm. go. That's that image. Okay. All right. So this was a beach shot. So right away, obviously, this is my family. Um, it's low light mm -hmm. uh, and it's a beach. So right away, it's not a lake. It's we're already dealing with a different scenario. Mm -hmm. So and you're in it. So did we're you have a tripod timer? Or how? Uh, yeah. OK. And so once again, as always, start with a crop. So want to put the family in center and I want to bring make it even more centered. But I want to keep that chair there. So now we're kind of all center frame. Mm -hmm. But then I look at this and go, oh, I like this kind of tree thing up here too. I don't want to necessarily lose that. Because mm. to me that tells a story. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, mm, I like that. Because some people just cut out the tree. It's like, I like that, you know, kind of mm -hmm. gives some story. Um, and then you go, okay, there you go. So once again, let's start with our edit. Um, now we go to the one you like, mm, don't like that. Um, tropical. I think it's tropical like Tofino. Vibes. The this vibes. is Tofino. The this vibes Tofino. are there. Yeah, so, you know, you could start with vibes. Ooh, but then I like this cool blues because see what it did mm -hmm. with that um, right with away. The sky and the sunset. And but I like that blue as well in the vibes. Um, should we try vibes? Let's, let's vibe it up. Let's vibe it. Let's just see. This was the thing. Um, because it's not just slap a preset on, right? Because mm -hmm. every color and light and mood a preset's going to respond differently. People think when people say buy my presets yeah. and then they're like, my photo's going to like, like that. Yeah. Well, if you have that condition, if you have that photo, that light and that, <laughs> you know what I mean? That ocean and yeah. you know, that, that you know, subject, that it's like, that. exactly. Then your photo will, and then you put the preset on, but then you still got to play around. Yeah. The preset won't make it look like that. It's mm -hmm. just kind of a base to work from. Um, okay. So let's play with temperature. Mm, not so much. Uh, let's go for this. Um, and notice one of the central stories. I like the sky and the blue. So I'm just going to right away pop down and play with the blues right away. I'm going to go after what I know I want to pop. So let's just look at the blues and go, I'm really liking these blues, you know, and then the hue. I kind of feel like the hue on this blue will be good. Like kind of, I'm liking that. So now I'm going to come up and see there's a lot of orange because of the fire. Mm -hmm. Um, Makes it really warm. I like that um, because I like the feeling that it's giving mm. of of warmth. And then if I do this, it pops that and then brings that. So I'm I'm liking this. Okay, Let's go for some. So you're just lowering the luminance on the oranges totally to make the oranges more orange. Totally, yeah, okay. and feel more warm, mm. right? And so okay, so I, I I identified right away that I wanted to go straight down um, and and work here. Um, exposure, I'm pretty good on highlights. Let's just play around. Maybe, you know, darken it a bit, bring it down. It's more moody vibes. Um, play with the white. Just test it, you know. Eh, don't like that. Don't like that. And then, yeah. Vibrance, let's see. Whoa! <laughs> I did not like that. You know? It's not a vibe? It's not a vibe. <coughs> We're ruining the vibes. Um, I mean, ultimately, I feel good about this. Now, what I might do is, because we are so, you know, it is dark, mm -hmm. I might go... And bring us up a bit. So I'm just going to do, you know, get some of the people. This is me and my daughter. And a little bit my wife over here. She's in the dark. My son's pretty much in the light. So he's okay. Um, and we're just going to see. You want it to look realistic. You don't want it to be like, oh, wow, like where people go and come up here to custom and expose. You don't want to be like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Supernatural. Look at that. Yes, we're glowing, you know, but it might just be a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, just move it a bit. 
it's like, you know, from that to that even just makes a difference, Mm -hmm. you know, play. So as you can see, like my editing is so like bare bones. It's just like, it's nothing, but it starts with the shot. It really is all about the shot. Um, and then, yeah, just I'm happy with that. That doesn't look fake, mm. you know, because I think that you want to avoid fake. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I might once again play with this again just to see, oh, okay, maybe we just do a little bit more there and vibrance, turn it up, crank it. Eh, there, there we go. And you go, okay, but these oranges are bothering me right back here. I feel like we can do a bit better. You know, it's just, it's all the light you're playing with, but. Mm-hmm. You know, because you can really pull it light. Like, um, can you imagine that? That's <laughs> horrific. But um, yeah, I would say that's probably pretty decent. Then you can come back up and play with temperature. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you really warm this up um, and make it feel? But these are three different categories. You know, you had the the lake, the all something really tree covered, and a little bit more tropical. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, right away, it's like if you started looking again at where you could go with this. You know you could really start, but some people like stuff like really dark, Mm -hmm. you know, and muted and moody. It just depends what your, your vibe is. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of like when I'm editing, try to get it in commercial fires, the name of this one. Um, I try and get it as close to like what it looks like in person, Mm -hmm. because to me, that's what's, what feels right. You know, some people might like something so hectic, but yeah, there you go. So, yeah, there's my daughter. Um, she, this tree, by the way. But see, this one is all about the sunset in the background, mm. that light popping through. So to me, the story there is someone looking away at this like moment mm. that's passing, right? Mm-hmm. This light popping through the tree. And so you really do want to tell, bring that, that light out, right? Um, maybe exposure you know what i mean just mm-hmm. and you could easily come and brush her i think it did so i had already brushed her mm-hmm. as i was working through this cuz um she wanted to wear my hoodie <laughs> she was obsessed <laughs> on this trip about wearing my hoodies um and then just maybe bring her a little bit more in like that you know mm-hmm. so yeah so anyway um there you go so my encouragement to people is one um if you start with a good composition you have a lot to work for mm-hmm. two um really really work around good light Mm -hmm. sunrise sunset so you already know that you're set up for success Mm -hmm. and three um just start with a uh, composition the person subjects in the middle set up your rule of thirds make sure you're not cutting off mountain peaks Mm -hmm. make sure you have enough sky make sure you have enough that you can crop for the edit you can always crop in you can can always crop crop in you can never (laughs) crop out you guys so you know if you need to take 10 steps back take it yeah um it's just for insurance so Mm -hmm. when you go to edit you're like oh you know, you're not like, it's on the vet. So, but as you can see, my editing process is very basic, very bare bones. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is kind of the same process you'd use if you're delivering it to a commercial client, all the time, right? All the time. So there you go. If, if anybody's time. encouraged or maybe you're d- yeah. you're like, what was this? This was so right. basic. And like I said, this was super fast. So yeah. I mean, you, you might know. spend a little more time here, a little more time I might go back there. and go. A lot of times what I do is I edit a photo mm-hmm. and I walk away uh, and then come okay. back with fresh eyes. Like the next day or yeah. something. And then go, oh, that's too hot mm-hmm. or too bright yeah. or not enough. So you let it simmer. Because your eyes get tired. Mm-hmm. And so, and if you're tired and you're editing, you yeah. can go, okay, like you come back to a photo and you're just like, that, no, that's too hot. I need to cool that down, you mm-hmm. know? And so... Um, you know, it's just all about like this one here. I love this photo. Like mm. you've got some foreground there. I've got Jessica sitting in the hammock. There's some light breaking through. But you you edit a photo and then you come back to it. And then you go, am I happy with it? Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes fresh eyes definitely help. So mm. there you go. Love it. Okay, so any... Let's just let's just say here, I, I connect with you, Scott. It's the first time that I'm seeing you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Scott... I want to do what you're doing. I want to get started. Like, what is mm-hmm. the one thing? Where do I even start mm-hmm. in 30 seconds? Because you got to go. Mm-hmm. What, what would you say to that person today? I would say start with what you have. Um, start creating the stuff that you want to create mm. and get connected to people that you feel are going where you want to go. Love it. There you go. 
Love it. Love it. Okay. Uh, people who want to connect with you a little bit further, where can they yes, find you? What they are you can working on? Follow me on Instagram on Scott C. Backin. Follow mm-hmm. me on TikTok uh, at Scott Backin. If you go to my blog, Scott C. Backin, it has all my handles that you can find me on. Okay. And yeah, and um, that's how you find me. Yeah. And of course, Socality too. If Follow you're Socality. Yeah. Come to one of our events. <laughs> and meet us in person. Maybe we'll see you here sometime at soon. At Socality House. I that's never right. looked at the camera. No, that's okay. We, we can wave goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much, Scott. This was Thank absolutely you. unbelievable. So I appreciate it. And I can't wait to, to hang out with you more in the future. Of course. All Thanks, right. Ryan. Appreciate it. All right. So I hope that conversation was as inspirational for you as it was for me. I know I left with just so many things to go out and apply. I challenge you, leave it in the comments below. What is the number one thing that you can apply to your photography, to your creativity, to your business today? Because as you write it down, you're more likely to apply it right? If this was helpful, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up and make sure to share this with somebody else who maybe could benefit from listening to it. And I will see you in the next video. Subscribe if you want more content like this. See you in the next one. Create something awesome. Peace.